this is Daniel, your Game Master and Master of Ceremony. This is Tori, and I play Dooley. This is Sorcerer, and I play Ty. This is Becca, and I play Mirgrat. And this is Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Welcome aboard. Yes, I am laying down. Yes, my eyes are closed, but I am thinking. I am thinking with this great brain of mine, new stories and opportunities for our performers to do. I can't do that staring at everything all the time. I'm staring at my own face at that bar tab all the time. That's not how you get good theater. However, you do get good theater with imagination. Ah, good, good. You are not imaginary. Good, you come here. Come here. Come, yes, good. I was wondering if you were going to show up this time. Ariadne, go get, go give me a pillow or something. Go, go. So don't mind me not getting up. I may be laying here or I may be a, a little out of it a bit and that has absolutely nothing to do with the large amount of medication I made for the slip disc in my basket. But in the meantime... This doesn't stop me from telling you more of what happened on the Tau Marie Celestia. Yes? Good. Good. Sit. No, not there. That's where my feet go. There. There you go. Good. Good. Sit. You have drink. Good. Now. <sighs> where was I? Ah, yes. When last we left our intrepid adventurers... They were in the med bay. Remember? Yes. They had opened up one of the cylinders they had found in one of the bug hives. You know, in the alien sector. That blew up. What do you mean you don't remember? Ugh. Go back and listen. Go back. Go. I'm not going to repeat that reading again. I don't have that kind of time in the day. While in the med bay, they had opened up one of the containers. Dooley had stepped in and opened it up, and they found the blue goo, very similar to the stuff they had found around the brain that they had found on the very first day of this adventure. Go back and listen. Since then, however, the goo had exploded, had enveloped Dooley, who was unconscious during this. However, it had become telepathic, and as it became telepathic, it sounded itself out towards Mirgrat and tried to ask for assistance. However, as they found out, the goo began to coalesce and become bugs. So it's becoming less telepathic as it turns into a butterfly. Exactly. Interesting. I'd like to advocate for the newspaper again. <laughs> I want ad uh, newspaper, I want fly sweaters, I want DDT, and I want it now! I feel like Ty would, would give her right arm right now for one of those electric tennis rackets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody please lower one of the bug zapper into there? <laughs> Unfortunately, you realize that if you did lower a bug zapper into there, you'd get something equivalent to a thunderstorm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it looks like a Tesla coil got set off. Yeah. So, anyway, but you're noticing this, and uh, so Ty, while all this is going on, and you're just looking at this going, how do we kill it? What are you actually doing? Well, first of all, I'm going to make my kid wear a oh. mask. It seems like it's kind of useless, but it, it might help. Okay. Um, just in case the thing, thing does work. get out of containment. And yeah, Sorry, I'm going to just lost... stand there, because, like, what is Ty really going to do here other than pretend to be a fake doctor? And if she no does that enough, eventually someone's going to start thinking she's not a real doctor, no matter how good she is at bullshitting. Fair enough. <laughs> this isn't really her thing. <laughs> <laughs> so okay just want to make sure you had head scream time too I, you know just want to make sure everything's not you know overly focused but uh, so okay like Ty is this like mercenary like badass that doesn't care about anyone and is like whatever you're on your fucking own and but it's also just like a super like 
conscientious and attentive parent. <laughs> and she's recognizing what she what she values, and what she values is her kid. So she always valued her. Kid. There you the go. Whole reason she was even yeah. like flying during the Shadow War is because private schools ain't cheap in Burkiri world. Yeah, I fucking love that. And her kid is much smarter than she is, so ain't no way she's gonna let him also become a fucking dumbass pilot. <laughs> The scary thing is, is that, again, if this was a TV show, uh, I could see you at some point sitting down with your son to kind of do the whole, you, you got, you're a lot smarter than I am. You are not going to become a dumbass pilot like I am, which, you know, then brings up the family drama and all the rest of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It would be very well written with the right person. Mm-hmm. We know it would be the right person if it were in B5. Well, yeah. Well, he wrote everything, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure as hell not giving it to DC Fontana. Who now? Uh, DC Fontana actually wrote a couple episodes of Babylon 5. She was famous for writing several episodes of the original Star Trek The Next Generation and the and, yeah the TOS and TNG, some of which are classics. A lot of them I've, re- I've watched recently and went, those are kind of dumb. And I actually did meet her once. I was a young guy in college. At the very first Babylon 5 convention in Dallas, I was working, uh, they called it Secret Service. I was a glorified gopher. And so I was in the green room one time, and we're all talking about stuff like this. She enters the room with, like, two people in her entourage. And she enters, and she literally says, "Uh, Greetings, I am DC Fontana. Like, again, she's expecting a fanfare. And the first words out of my lips were, Who? And she (laughs) just, like, stared daggers at me. And it wasn't until later that I understood who she was, even though I'd been a Star Trek fan for years. (laughs) So it was one of those things of the... Yeah, you've got an ego the size of Montana, and you're slowly growing your own gravity well. You know what? Fine, whatever. I'm going to hire somebody else. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, the episode you mentioned before with the telepathic kid, that was actually written by DC Fontana, believe it or not. Not a favorite so, one. Yeah. I like not the concept, but again, the execution is kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, so you're been a very good parent with that and, and examining this and sure. the doctor I actually don't see the, the doctor around eventually some nurses do come by with a plate of spoo it's a very large plate like they just kind of got the the equivalent of the KSC 20 piece bucket <laughs> bucket of spoo <laughs> sorry it's like now I'm seeing images in my head of little movie posters in, in, the, in the Babylon 5 universe for a a comedy called Bucket of Spoo. Okay. He comes in with a, the box of Spoo and immediately just starts opening the, the tray, you know, shoving it in and pushing it into the container. Once it gets to the other side, it does open, and there's a little bit of uh, activity of the cloud towards the Spoo, but it's very minimal. It's like, you know, it's like watching a cat look at a new food that you got it because it was healthy. Well... If it gets hungry, it'll uh, eat it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but everyone seems to be watching this, all except for Mirgrat, who is watching the bug form uh, from the chrysalis goo without chrysalis and finding this absolutely fascinating. Fascinating, by the objectively. T- <laughs> by the time it gets done, which does take a bit of time, it's not like, you know, like watching the, the T-1000 you know, come together and make a person, it actually does slowly begin to congeal into the, in, uh, the very similar to the bug that everyone saw before, but its carapace is starting to harden. Its uh, eye stalks start to get a little bit of independence. And like I said, there's like 400 eyes on this thing, all of which shine just a little bit but they're all in these independent stocks and tendrils. The wings itself are taking furtive openings and closings and small, not flaps, but just that kind of back and forth, like it's testing to see if its muscles work. It is truly humbling to witness the music of life in life action. <laughs> Told y'all so, this was a bug thing, and you didn't believe me, and look what we have now. 
<laughs> I just want to throw that out there before we all get killed by that thing or whatever else is going to happen next. I just wanted to know that this security camera's in here, right? It'll be on fire. Yes. <laughs> I, I can see like Ty turning to the security camera <laughs> and then getting footage from the security camera's point of view. Of Ty <laughs> pointing at the isolab. I told you it was bugs. But did you believe me? No. Uh, <laughs> A short monologue. I like that this does in fact cement that Ty is the expert. Yes. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> the expert and the Ivanova of our crew, let's not lie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a really sketchy Ivanova. That's all. Sketchy. Just a little criminal. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe not the Ivanova we want, but definitely the Ivanova we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you're watching this, and uh, yeah, Ty's going, we're all going to die! This is bad! I told you not to, but you did anyway! You also notice, uh, Birga, besides, once it actually gets done coagulating and starts beating its wings tentatively a little bit, it's still gooey, it's still not shaping, and you can definitely tell the interior is still a liquid, even if the, ex even if the carapace isn't. It starts to take, you know, little attempts at flying, you know, lifts off the window, comes back, lifts off the window, comes back, a little bit further, comes back. And eventually when it gets satisfied enough that it has propellant, it actually goes back to the canister and it has kind of a mouth, but it's kind of hard to deal with. But it, it's like its mouth holds on to the uh, neural stock of the eye and its eyes start probing into the, uh, the neural cable behind it. Gross. Okay, I want to just like kind of like do some surface scan to like figure out what it's trying to do right now. I suspect it's trying to eat. Okay. Give me a surface scan. Telepathy check. 27. 27. Okay. It's harder to read because it's not the same goo that was telepathically active. This one is now a bit more dim, harder here. The best metaphor I can think of is, again, it's like traveling on the road listening to an AM station and that eventually you get to the point where it kind of cuts out a little bit, isn't quite, you know, dims out, you hear more static than anything else. You're hearing this from the, from the thing. It still has thoughts and it still has, you know, emotions and everything else like that, even on a primordial state, but it's not the same as the goo. Goo was very active, very connective. Damn, um, I wish we had another bug because I'm wondering if this is like, this is the natural s transition from goo to adult bug, or if like, this is what happens when you have an adult bug that is formed from goo that didn't get enough brains to eat. <laughs> Ever the scientist. That's a reasonable well, you did it right? Is it, is it a natural deterioration of this ability, or is it that it, it is missing something crucial from its development. It's a very good question. And if you had more bugs, you might be able to find that out. It's also possible that the goo itself, more of it will start coming out because there's still a lot of primordial goo that's still on the floor. Yes. And, and some in the air and things like that. But the feeling you get is not that it's feeding. There is a little bit of it. Like it's draining a little bit of the electronic charge of the neurons that are there. Even though this eye, who knows how old it is, but judging from the story, it can't be recent. Going after the electronic charge, I wonder if we could just like give this thing a Tesla coil. The actual feeling you get for what it's what it's doing, what it's doing, yes, it's a little bit of the feeding, but the more the feeling you get is record keeping. Oh boy, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> As I can tell from the pause of either the I was not expecting that or the now I'm terrified. It's the I was not expecting. <laughs> like, listen, at a certain point, you, so, it, you, you just have to accept that, that science is terrifying and you can either, you know, let that rule you or you can just go with your scientific interest. Fair enough. So... Here's where your scientific interest is going to take an interesting turn, because you did ask, you know, is this a ability that went away or is it something that's lacking in nutrition? Is when in the back, you notice a slight door open. And out of the door 
comes that familiar blue trilobal brain that was found that first day. Ah, yes. The infamous brain. The infamous brain. Once that happens, the, the insect you're actually looking at, the bug, again, acknowledges it, goes back to the eye for a second, and then starts flying towards the brain. The puddle of goo and the mist of blue start emigrating towards the brain. Slowly, hey, because uh, again, it doesn't have a lot of great motor locomotion, but it's going there. I don't think we should feed it that. I'm in between agreeing with you and wanting to see what happens. Have I been right about every single other aspect of this? Yes. <laughs> Should we feed it? I have to thing? leave that pause in. No. <laughs> well, it is hard to argue with your record. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when Doc Rule. Oh, go ahead. She is my mom. Actually, you, you kind of broke up for me there a second. I couldn't yeah, hear you. Yeah, can you say that one more time? It's a little Doc Rule comes in from around the corner, and he says, now we have our chance. He is in full head-to-toe bio gear. I mean, like, not just masks, but again, I know Dooley was in some of this, but he was in the full biohazard suit. He's 100% hazmat. 100% and... hazmat. Exactly. And he, you know, goes to the chamber, you know, to, to into the airlock chamber. The changer sluice up, but he's keeping an eye on the goo and the mist. And it is, it's like it's cleaning its way to the back. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's this goo that just as it moves, it takes every last bit of it with it. It's not leaving any residue anywhere. And this is where we and... found out that it's actually just a rogue Yithian cleaning product. <laughs> Blue goo by Menon. But actually, it starts, you know, just all of the traces of itself, even off the, the uh, face shield that Dooley was using, it just kind of smears off cleanly. Damn. Is it all, is it all makes its way towards the brain. And Doc Rule comes in, grabs Dooley, pulls her out. Um, once they are inside the airlock, closes the airlock from the ISO lab, hits a particular chemical, which they have this, this giant spray, it looks like a halon, uh, the system would just whoosh, you know, basically it is a shower of decontaminants that nothing will survive if you're not in a suit which, again, they seem to be okay. He immediately takes out a, a wand, runs it over himself, runs it over Julie, and pulls the both of them out. He immediately screams at a bunch of nurses who can't hear him initially because he, he has to press a button to be heard outside of his suit. But then he presses the button, he actually orders the nurses to get Julie onto a bed, full examination. Uh, I want test after test after test after test after test done immediately. And then he kind of turns around and unzips himself enough so he can get the 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 suit off that he can kind of communicate with everybody easily he's not out of the suit he's just like kind of taking off the hood okay great let's trip your uh, plasma chemical thing right now and kill it he says but uh, you're, you're saying we should just kill it all right now yeah I've been saying that this whole time doctor Whoa, okay, this everything. Oh, oh, Mirgret, say again. Please. Well, uh, she has been right about everything, as much as it distresses me to impede the progress of science. He says, uh, you "Realize, if I hit, if I hit the button, we're going to lose the brain, we're going to lose everything that has, and we're going to lose that eye. All of it is going to go away." Uh, uh sure do. The question is, Ty. what do we lose if you don't hit the button? The answer is our brains. Ty, I believe a diplomacy check is in order. Okay. Um, yeah. 
31. Oh, there it is. 31. Okay, yes. I'm just going to just for do a resistance just in case. Oh, right. I actually have to do that. Then. Probably not, but I just want to see what he does. Mm-hmm. 23. Okay. He makes some good arguments. You make better arguments. And a lot. I give this to, to Ty, one, because Ty is the negotiator for here. Let's not lie. <laughs> so, uh, no. I mean, it's sure not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the other thing is, is that you sort of notice, again, with the diplomacy and everything else, he's paying attention to you. He's barely paying attention to uh, Mirgrat. Well, I mean, Ty is the ex. That's true. And Ty is also supposedly so, a human, so... Supposedly. There's that, too. <laughs> oh, is he racist? <laughs> <laughs> he looks over and says, Okay, you make a good point. I have enough samples to work with. I have DNA samples to work with for both that and the goo. Okay. Everybody's out. Everybody's stable. He looks over, types in a couple commands, isolation, purge, and decontaminate under highest duress. He actually turns a little bit to to Ty and says, "You may want to tell your telepath friend to um, leave the room." Now I'm gonna witness this. Okay. They're standing so, right there. You could tell them yourself, but. Yeah, I'm 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 starting to think that this doctor is racist. Like he knows Mirgrat can understand humans. <laughs> like, I've been talking whatever human le- like I've been talking to him in his language. I and he's still not addressing me directly. Let's just say I have interesting backgrounds for all of the crew members that I've been able to mention. Y'all have just barely had a chance to actually engage because none of you are crew members. So <laughs> he just kind of acknowledges this is all right, as you wish. Types, uh, presses the button, and immediately plasma is vented from the reactor core into the ISO lab. Now, it's going to scorch the hell out of the isolab itself. In other words, everything's, things are going to be blackened on the inside. But it's the, this is the most extreme of we have a viral infection that's going to kill us all. It You know, nothing cle- uh, nothing cleanses quite like fire. <laughs> or if you prefer uh, Adventures with Gumball, clean every place he touches with fire. It's a good show. So yes, it just rains plasma down the thing. And Mirgrat, I'm going to need a will save, followed by a fortitude save. All right. Those are my two good saves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so starting with will. Ten. Ten. Oh, you're not going to like the next one. Give me a fortitude save. I am better at fort than I am at will. Twelve. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, dice made, and that was cold. <laughs> sixes on both. You rolled sixes plus your modifier on both. All right. That's what yeah. I get for being cocky. <laughs> <laughs> dies and it dies screaming as one does. that's as what as one does when plasma is vented onto them yes exactly when one has a chance to scream as plasma is vented on them but this is even worse because this is almost a telepathic attack as just the echoes and screams and needs and that fear and panic and you know everything you could associate with things being set on fire just waves at you like a tsunami. So you initially take that brunt, and it hurts. You actually do take some damage from that because you were not expecting that level of of pain induced directly into the neurons. But at the same time, then the fortitude saves because your body reacted to said pain. And because it was more real than real, you might as well have been feeling like you were in the plasma itself 
as it thing doused, and you go down. You are, you know, thud right on the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And thankfully, you are in a med lab. <laughs> so when you go down, uh, some of the doctors come by, you know, get you on a stretcher and get you on a uh, on a bed. Immediately start doing, you know, poking and prodding to make sure you're okay. And uh, that's when Dr. Rule kind of turns to Ty and says, I did warn her. Uh, whatever telepathic sense was going to go through, it was going to affect her, her system, everything. But she wanted to stay. Sorry, or yeah, wanted to stay. Yeah, that's just kind of a thing that's been going on lately. You just can't tell them sometimes. Oh my god, that <laughs> was so fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, the doctor looks over at, at Ty and says, yeah. yeah, just sometimes you can't talk to them. I mean, here we go. I've lost a find of a century. I had to do it to sac. I had to sacrifice it to get a per a patient out, who hopefully is going to be okay. We have another one that we have to deal with now in the lab. That I'm going to have to find some uh, telepathic specialist to do anything other than you know inject her with the certain uh, neuropeptides right. needed for repair. And I. I have samples, but I've still never been able to diagnose what that thing came from. It is amazing and beautiful, and it's gone now. I, <sighs> he's, his shoulders slump. He lets out a long breath. And then he says, by the way, Ty, brace yourself. Mm. He says, oh, after this, I need to drink. I need to come down, and I need to deal. He turns to you and says... I hate to drink alone. You want to drink? Sure. It's been a weird week. Why not? Uh, so give me a sense of check, Ty. Doctor. Hmm? Sorry, what was that? I'm going to be so upset okay. if you sleep with the racist doctor. She's not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not really sure Sorry, what you're doing. Ty? That just seems like something she wouldn't say no to, because what else is she going to do? Like, lurk around the med bay while Mirgarat and Dooley are, like, getting... <laughs> doctored like so in other words they're getting doctored and then you're gonna get doctored ty is not into humans we've already addressed this <laughs> multiple times give me a though give me a sense motive check ty sure uh, what do i have 100 <laughs> 23 <laughs> 23 oh yeah. yeah he's stressed he wants a drink and you're fairly certain he's trying one of those weird human mating rituals. Eh, humans. <laughs> mm. What are you going to do? Yep. He, he says, he talks to a couple of the other commands and says, look, uh, everyone, do what you can. Clean up. I need to take five. I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> I have now become in a state of being where I'm not going to be helpful for you guys for at least, he looks on his watch, <sighs> eight hours. So... Everyone, keep doing what you're doing. Alert me if there's a problem, but and keep an eye on the other two. But I'm going. Uh, I got to do some R and R right now. And his uh, his main nurse, who actually looks different from the last time you had he, you saw the main nurse, he looks like a completely new person. She looks over and says, "Okay, doctor, I got it. I got. I'll I'll call the, some of the other docs to to cover." He says, "Thank you. I appreciate that. And make sure all the records we've got on the brain and everything else like that get sent to my computer." And with uh, the classification check. He said, uh, yes, doctor, absolutely. He said, great. He offers his arm to uh, to Ty. Shall we? Um. Yeah, let's go. I mean, I don't take his arm. <laughs> but... You just kind of like pat him on the I'm shoulder like, and yes. say, all right, let's go. <laughs> and okay, and we already established that you are not into humans. Just so I know for interlude and all the rest of that, uh, if he does attempt his primitive human mating rituals, your answer is? Uh, no. Okay. Actually, Ty will probably just pretend not to understand what he's trying to do. Playing dumb works. Ah! Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So, okay, no problem. While this is happening, again, Dooley is out because Tori is out. Mirgrat, you are reeling from all the, that you have experienced. This has been a strange day. You've got a lot to record, and once you 
you know, get up from being put into a medically induced knockout state through telepathy, yeah, you've got a lot to write down. Either way, what's happening with Tuvo? Oh, um, Pi will bring him along. This okay. is the best way to keep someone from hitting on you. Oh yes, my God. yes it is. <laughs> is take your 10 year old because no one... <laughs> nobody's ever going to use the the, the, uh, the pickup line do you want to make another or uh, sorry kid here's 20 bucks I'm going to go bang your mom <laughs> never works okay I should say not never but I've, I have never heard of a situation where it does I was going to say uh, like Taking your kid on you with a with a date that you don't want to be a date is a master level move. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and word of wisdom for everybody listening: if you don't have a date, try a cat. <laughs> Sorry, if you don't have a kid, try a cat. Sorry. So, all right. But Ty, he takes you to the little bars. Tubo comes with. And he immediately orders, like, a bourbon for himself, uh, a milkshake for Tuvo, and then he asks you what's your, uh, you know, your poison of choice. Beers. Just just one. She's only going to order one. She doesn't really know if humans would okay. order two beers at once. Fair enough. Now, you're not at Chokar's Kill or anything like that. He actually takes you too closer to something like an officer's mess. This is a... Or I should say one of the more high rollers uh, uh, establishments at the casino, where again, uh, the people who are who are acting as the uh, waiters and bartenders are very well dressed. Uh, everyone around you is also very well dressed. There's a feeling of genteelness, I guess, for lack of a term. There's a difference between going to a dive bar and the lounge at the uh, the Luxor Casino. So yeah, the kind of place Tide normally doesn't go. Got it. Exactly. So a little bit out of your element, but again, you understand alcohol. Mm -hmm. So he, he when the drinks come in, Tubo is quizzical. He's never had a milkshake before. It's not something that's in normal Bercari, uh stuff, but he tentatively tries it. He actually really does like it. And you could tell very quickly he's doing his best not to devour it in six seconds. <laughs> Yeah, you drink a beer, and I don't. I don't think this is your. No, this is your first time you've drinking a beer that's actually in a human body. Yeah, that sounds right. Ty's been kind of busy lately. Yeah. yeah. So, if nothing else, it tastes so different. It's like you know, being used to. It's like when you're when you order a soda and everyone always brings you Coca Cola, and or if you're from places where every soda is called a Coke. And then you end up in, say, parts of Texas, where if you ask for a Coke, they will bring you a Dr. Pepper, and the taste is very different. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that similar sort of difference between drinking beer as a Bacari versus drinking beer as a human. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep. But he shakes his head, and he says, So, Doc, uh, what did you get out of that weird experience? I mean, I've got notes of plenty I gotta take. I've got studies to do. I've got some experiments to do with some of the biochems that I've managed to get off of the brain before all that weirdness happened. Uh, what about you? What'd you get? You know, I have never seen a bug that can turn in, that can transform without a chrysalis or some kind of egg. At least, it's a new one in the Xeno. It's a very new one. Zero, the alien bugs world. So we've got more, in other words, we have possibly found a new species, never before classified. Um, he actually kind of laughs a bit and goes, so, uh, you want to take dual credit on that one? I mean, I'll help you write the paper, but if I'm going to do that, I should at least be second author. <laughs> he laughs and says, all right, all right, I'll, second author it is. We'll, we'll write it together and... I'll give you I'll give you cre uh, 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 fifty fifty split on it. Sure, it'll uh, so look good on my postdoc whenever I get to this colony <laughs> and start it. Yeah. So any last is well. I hope you're you know you're happy out there. I mean I'm still going to be on route for a while. I'm going to be on this. Uh, he laughs. He's a, this 
nine, ten, twenty year cruise, be in the dock on this ship for as long as possible. So, um, I guess, I guess when the ship goes in a dry dock, so will I. But yeah, that's how things are. That's life for you. You know, he sighs a little bit, sips his bourbon. Uh, you can already tell that that he's about halfway through his bourbon, and his fingers are already tapping the the uh, uh, the, the the bar for a second. Um, this is, uh... mm-hmm. Yep, you gotta make money somehow, I guess. Yeah, well, it's it's the money, it's the location, it's you know, it's just how it is. Life deals you strange cards and. Strange things. I mean, uh, why are you going to the colony? I mean, I couldn't think of anybody who would want to go, to, especially one as educated as you, as a specialist, want to end up on a on a newfound colony. I mean, why go there? Uh, believe it or not, I was hoping to find an undiscovered species of alien bug. And also, <laughs> they pay me a lot. Student loans aren't cheap for a doctorate these days. <laughs> he kind of laughs for a bit. Well, fate is really kind to you, which I'm going to need a reflex save. Okie <laughs> Uh, reflex. That's not good. 16. Okay, 16 give me a will save now. 13. So yeah, uh, the intelligence check is the other one I ask about, but this is the wheel save, not a wisdom save, but yeah. So yeah, you don't spew your beer when he compliments the fact that fate has been very lucky to you, because <laughs> you've kind of been through some stuff ever since getting on board that shuttle to come here. <laughs> Ty has seen some shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You, you kind of take it in stride and go, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I have been a little lucky, rather than doing the whole, oh my god, I have so much to tell you on this, oh, I, you know, etc. But, you know, this is old hand for you of, of a little bit of deception, a little bit of the, nope, keep a straight face, all you can, keep a straight face. Mm-hmm. So, now here's a good chance for an intelligence chest. That's the one that's a straight d20, and roll under your intelligence. Uh, what is my intelligence? 13. Ooh. Not good. 14, technically, with yeah, you're, you're modifier. 13, Okay, so you... No modifier, so yeah, you just... You, you didn't quite make that yeah. roll. That's okay. But you're just like... Oh. Uh, <laughs> these beers are really good. Like, really good. <laughs> <laughs> and... Sure do like beer. <laughs> So, but yeah, he starts, you know, telling a little bit of his story about, you know, what he's doing here, and he starts talking to you about, you know, what he's going to do when he, you know, signs a paper and try to get it out, and he he actually does mention that he's got a friend who will uh, uh, copyright for the for you guys. Not sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not copyright. The uh, when like ghostwriting, except it's not ghostwriting. Uh, peer review. Ah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, he's got somebody who will... No, peer review is when they examine it to see whether or not it's, it's pure or not. But again, he's got somebody who basically provides an alias for his writing. He's You don't need, you don't need one. He just does it for himself because uh, he likes to keep a low profile. But again, he's like, yeah, you get 50-50 and this will be that. So, and again, he, you know, he's already... you know He downs the last of his bourbon, signals for another one. He's like, I'm going to need some oxy pills by the time I get home. And I'm definitely getting six hours of rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. I can't believe I lost that. So, all right. A- anything else you want to ask this guy? Or are you just gonna you know, grab your drink, grab your kid, and go? Yeah, I'm gonna make some excuse about how Tuvo needs to eat something that isn't milk, and then take go to bed probably because it's been a really long day, and you know, casually escape this very awkward conversation. Fair enough. He, um, I won't even have you do a diplomacy role on that or anything else like that because you're like the, eh, I got a kid, I got to feed, then we got to get him to bed, and honestly, I, you know, I got to get the rest too. He just kind of, you know, raises his glass. Well, no worries. Thanks for the joining me for a drink. Like I said, I hate to drink alone, but I'll, I'll work it from here. Yeah, he kind of, you know, taps. He, he tries to kind of give a little salute, but it ends up him tapping the glass on his forehead and then raising it up. It's like, yeah, yeah, some, 
<laughs> but he does it in such a way that he's not like pouring. Oh, go ahead. Waiting awkwardly. <laughs> he returns to his his drink and just kind of like, all right. You know, by the time you leave, the second drink is coming. You know, it'll just get slid right to him. So yeah, you have a chance to to get Tuvo back. Uh, do you take him to your quarters or do you take him to where do you take him? Uh, that was made up. I'm actually going to go back to Med Lab and see if either Dooley or uh, Mirgorad are awake or not yet. That okay. was an excuse. No problem. Uh-huh. I didn't know if you wanted to bring Tuvo with you. That was the other question. Yeah, might yeah. as well. She's an intern. Okay. <laughs> he did take a nap in the last episode, so. So you yeah, head right. back up to Med Lab uh, to take a look at everybody. They kind of give you the, you know, they give you the, oh, hey, it's you. And you just wander over to where uh, Dooley and Mirgrat are laying. Uh, they've got them rested comfortably. They got the whole bed situation with the straps on them. Not the I'm strapping you down, but more like the thing they put over a person that that scans constantly for various activity. Yes. So you're looking at them, and again, you have no idea what to, you, you have no idea what to look at, but you just kind of like look over. Yes, I'm a doctor. Doctor, doctor. Yeah, I'm a doctor. And uh, oh, look, that's a doctor thing. And but you can't read what any of this is meaning off of the things. Mm-hmm. But where I'm going to end with is, as you look over, Mirgret starts to rouse a little bit. First of all, um, you figure out very quickly that one thing that Mirgret will do sometimes in this situation is, particularly when stressed and passed out, essentially Mirgret gets a little bit of gas bubble. So the first thing. Mirgrad does when they open their eye is just kind of let out a very delicate burp. And it's not just the it's more of the and which has an amazing stench, by the way. But it's also just this regurgitation of a smell not unlike what you caught with the blue goo and the bugs and the everything else. So it's just kind of that strange smell. But yeah, Mirgrad gets hella morning breath. Yeah. <laughs> But again, Mirgrad kind of shakes their head and says, it just says the whole, you have the thoughts in your head, Mirgrad, of the screaming that you just heard, the loss you felt, uh, not just of you know, hearing them die, but also, again, the goo is gone, the bugs are gone, the brain is gone, and, you, and even the canister was scorched. It's still there, but it's scorched. Um, just that feeling of of loss and what's funny is that you have this funny feeling the feeling of loss isn't necessarily yours just again like you've picked up somebody else's sense of loss for a moment or two it's as if millions of voices suddenly cried in terror and we're suddenly silenced yep thank you obi-wan pakmara that seemed appropriate (laughs) It did. It honestly did. Uh, <laughs> but the other thing you're you're finding out is that that you have a better sense of with your Yithian at least of some of the words that you caught. Again, you're not a fluent fluent speaker. You're like a very basic speaker, but you're you know you get some of the ideas. And yeah, it's a different language entirely that you heard. But the funny thing is. The phrase, it's happening again, comes to mind. Well, if what happened last time was they got killed by fire, that is not shocking at all. So, (laughs) I ain't worried about it. So, it's time! Please gather the interns! We have much to discuss! Sure, I'll just go ahead and do that. I'm, like, looking around like an intern is going to be, like... I mean, you can play for Tuvo and Wagner. Well, yeah. <laughs> she obviously. Well, technically, you had another intern, but an intern. No, no, no. Uh, what's his face wasn't an intern because he 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 went to the dark side before I started taking on uh, before I took on Wagner as an intern. That is true. The Vladimir is not is not a. Uh, no, Vladimir was never an official intern. <laughs> not an intern, but. <laughs> But the other thing you have to feel, besides the whole, like I said, just the that sense of loss and it's happening again, 
you do get the image of again those three planets and those three circles again and you feel you get that image again of the tablet that also had the same image of the three circles sorry the three circles with three interlocking rings around them and this kind of sense of something is there something important is there I mean yeah but it's like something they know is important is there that's the thing the bugs, if you remember, never brought you guys here. Something else did. This is gonna be bad! <laughs> <laughs> now do you have a cannibal raid on you? Yes! And now we are having here a beautiful situation of bugs and goo and telepathy and all sorts of the problems that come with it, as well as a drunk doctor. But when is a drunk doctor? Never is it a fun time at a party. This time, of course! But you'll have to join us next time to find out more of what is going on and for the joyful return of Dooley, who was out running her recordings on Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Now, if you'll excuse me, the painkillers are taking effect and you're looking all sorts of blurry. And that's where we're in for this week. I want to thank everyone for joining us and hope that you continue to join us every two weeks for another episode of Odyssey. If you have any questions, comments, constructive criticisms, or just want to say hi, then you can find us at temporalplaygrounds.com slash odyssey or email us at temporalplaygrounds at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, Odyssey, a Babylon 5 RPG podcast, or Reddit, r slash odyssey b5 babylon 5 was created by j michael straczynski and is owned by warner brothers domestic media the babylon 5 role-playing game was produced by mongoose publishing utilizing the ogl gaming license for d20 our audio engineer is gabriel belt our theme music titan striker was composed by evan king incidental music provided by tabletop audio at tabletopaudio.com all other music provided by creative commons license and is available of information on our website once again, I am Daniel, and I thank you for joining us on this grand adventure. Good night, and keep dreaming.